Howdy, beautiful Bart here, and welcome. All right, so we kind of pick up where we left off. Um, this is the try before you buy for the um, the Explorer pack, and since honestly the Explorer pack itself from City Studios is just two characters and your items right here you see on the shelf, and you got a pistol. Um, flashlight, binoculars, you got all the, the cool little stuff for explorers. You got jeeps, and I have this set up, and you suck. I, they're not perfect yet, but you can actually get in, drive the jeep. I threw some obstacles in here just to kind of goof around. Hey, the driving mechanics, you can think um, Epic Games for that. It's theirs. I haven't done anything to tweak it yet because I'm working on so many other things on this. Since it was just this, um, I wanted to add some other things in to kind of showcase what you can do here. So with the, the Jeep, you can get in and out, and you can drive it at will. And since there's two of them, it works independently from each other, so I can actually go get, get in the other one and drive it separately from that one. So you can see they, they work separately from each other. Get out, and then walk around. I threw a pair of binoculars over here on the ground. You walk over, you hit E to pick them up, and they automatically respawn. I can make it where they don't automatically respawn, which is what I'll do here in just a second, but I also set it up to where you hit the B key, and you have binoculars. So you have the binocular view, and use your mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. So when you're zoomed all the way in, like, alright, this is awesome, hit B to put them away, and you see the animation worked for it as well. Add, add a little custom animation that I made. But whenever I go back into it, it defaults back to the normal default value. So I can zoom in, boom, go back in here, and I have to zoom back in again. I can take that out or add that back in, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm open either way. But I thought it was awesome that you could actually do this. So I set it up, and it works. So the next thing I want to do is we have a pistol. I want to pick up that pistol, and I want to use it. So, similar system to picking up the binoculars. If I want to make the binoculars go away, I'm going to go into my gadgets, um, I'm sorry, my pickups, go to the binox, and at the end, we got all this stuff right here. What I did was I deactivated and reactivated and all that stuff right here and set up do once. Um, we can actually get rid of a lot of this stuff to where now um, I can get rid of all of this and get rid of this and if I picked it up then all I want to do is destroy Ector. And that will just make it go away and never come back. Alright, so that's good. So the next pickup we want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and right click and I'm going to create a new blueprint actor and we're going to call this pistol underscore P for pickup and then I'm going to go ahead and open it. Make sure I shove it over here to the side and then I'm going to go to my uh, weapon, pistol, select the skeletal mesh. I want to add component, skeletal mesh. It automatically selects the pistol right there. And I'm just going to call that pistol. And all I want to do is I want to rotate it so it's laying on its side. Um, check the elevation on it once we get into the in game but I'm just going to move it up just a hair so it's hovering now I'm going to click off of that and I'm going to add a component of box collision and I'm going to grab that box collision to the scale it um, slide it up here a little bit so I need to be standing pretty much on top of it to be able to, to do anything with it so we'll go to our event graph, we're going to hit compile and save. We're going to delete everything inside of here. We're going to select our box collision, right click, 
add event on component begin overlap right click again on component end overlap other actor cast to player underscore base that is the name of my player character so I'm control C and control V I'm going to connect that and that so we're doing the same thing we're going to cast our player character and what we want to do here is uh, sorry I'm getting thirsty Got all this stuff. I need to clean up all this mess here. Um, I'm just going to grab all this and hit C by Nox. And I am just going to grab them and I'm going to shove it over here out of the way. Now, with Drive the Jeep, the replication is kind of buggy and not working correctly. But until I fix that, I'm just going to leave that stuff the way it is. So at pickup, okay, we're going to use that same thing here, but we're going to, just so you know what we did here, I'm going to go ahead and create a new category here. I'm going to call that Bionox. And then I'm going to put this one. I can now go from the drop down box and Bionox. And Bionox and by dogs. So the reason why I'm doing that is now I can minimize that and I don't see those. I don't have to worry about those at all. So now I'm going to create a new variable called um, has pistol. Howdy, howdy, howdy. And then I'm going to go ahead and give it a category of pistol. And then I'm going to add another new variable at pistol put that in my pistol and I want to do one more pistol picked up and again I'm going to change category so I can put that in my pistol category so you notice we had four here has binox at binox picked up Binox and used Binox or using Binox. So the next variable we want to create is pistol drawn. You can call these whatever you want, but just so I can differentiate of what we're actually doing here. So what we need to do now is compile and save and what we want to do here is again compile and save make sure we save often as our player we want to at pistol nope sorry being dumb set at pistol and I'm gonna go ahead and control C and control V to copy and paste that so now I'm going to check that one and then leave this one unchecked. So what this is doing is it's telling the the player character that we are at the pistol to pick it up. Okay. So now let's go back to our, our pistol. We don't have anything here. So what I'm going to do is keyboard E, not enter. Well, you know what? Screw you. I can just come back over here and do this. Keyboard E. What I want to do now is we want to get a reference to get at pistol. You want to get at that pistol, boy. Get at it. And we want a branch node. We want to get at pistol. All right. The first step in this, I want to replicate this one so um, we know that the player has a pistol. Nope, we're going to do a whole different kind of aim offset. It's going to be just like using the binoculars we just did. So you can see when you're, we're replicating something like this, like at Jeep, tell server to start uh, driving, tell client to start driving. We're going to do basically the same thing right here. Um, 
I want to replicate this, but let's get it working first, then I'll come back and I'll I'll kind of pick it all apart and replicate it. So I want to get at pistol. And if we are at pistol, then we want to know do we do we has a pistol? Then we want this branch. Do we already have one? So are we at the pistol? If yes, we're at it, do we have a pistol? If the answer is yes, then kiss your butt. You don't need it. You don't need to do anything. If you don't have it, then here's what we need to do now also is we want to grab, and let's look at our mesh. Our hand, our, our mesh right here, we want to go back in here, go to our weapon, skeletal mesh, and it doesn't show up as a static mesh anywhere else. So it only has a skeletal mesh. So let's go back to our player base and add a component, a skeletal mesh, and we're going to call this pistol. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to socket this to the main hand. And you can see that it is not in the correct direction here. I am going to uncheck real time so home cheese will stop moving around. We're going to do something else with this here shortly. So we need an animation to go along with the pistol and all that stuff. We just need to get that pistol in the hand. I said it doesn't have to be perfect right now because this isn't the correct animation to go along with it or anything. We just want it. Oh, hello. Not in his crotch. We want it in his hand. You know what? That's good enough. I'm not worried about it being absolutely dead on perfect. Like I said, we're going to have to change this anyway. Go and compile and save, but we want to do something else here. Scroll down and turn off visibility. So now the pistol is invisible. Compile and save. Go back to our event graph. And we're going to come back to that because we want to draw our pistol out separately. So we're going to use the R key to actually draw the pistol and put it away. Okay, so we're just trying to do the pickup. So are we at the pistol? Do we have a pistol? No, we don't have one. Then set has pistol to true. So since we don't have a pistol, let's give it to ourselves. And let's also set that to pistol picked up. Compile and save. Now, this is just going to handle when we're overlapping the box here. And again, don't like using event tech, but it'll work for right now. All right, so cast to player underscore base. Um, get our player character and get pistol picked up. And if pistol picked up was true, then we want to destroy the actor. So that'll get rid of it out of the scene and it'll no longer be available for anybody else to pick up. All right.
Um, it may or may not be right. I don't know. So let's actually go in here to our pickups. And since we don't want to walk 15 miles every time to go pick it up, like we did with the Binox, <coughs> that's good enough. So we'll walk over there. If we walk over it, nothing should happen at all. And we hit R, we haven't set up yet. We can set B, because we haven't done anything yet. So we're standing on top of the pistol, we can hit E, pick it up, and it is now gone. But it does not appear in our hands, because we haven't said draw the pistol yet. Cool. Cool. Everything's working thus far. Now, I don't have an animation for that. However, we can cheat a little bit and go to add new... Um, no, excuse me. We can actually go to this thing, and there is animation the starter pack, add a project. This is Explorer TB4, so we'll do that. Add the project. This will take just a moment to set up, and it's going to add the animation starter pack to it. What we currently need is, we can do this a couple different ways. We can actually get a draw pistol, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to grab one animation. And I want um, idle pistol right here. So I'm going to go to my animations, other copy here and I am going to shit UE4 mannequin go to that mesh and I gotta fix that mesh run it 50 back 20 down 10 up 10 upper arm up 50 lower arm back 20 down 10 hand up 10 retargeting manager select humanoid rig Modify Pose, Use Current Pose, Save. And now we want to go into we shouldn't need anything else from there. We just need to go to our other animation, this guy, and we want to retarget, duplicate, use my polygon skeleton, I want to replace idle underscore with hold underscore I want to change character animation other okay and retarget so now if we do save all and hold pistol. Now he's currently holding the uh, the binox, which is no big deal. Uh, we can actually go into let's close everything else out for now and we'll go back to him as we need him. If we go to our mesh for our character and now let's go to preview controller use specific animation and then select our hold pistol go to our skeleton our main hand we're using this and for some reason it doesn't want to stay lit so I'm going to hold on to it and hit delete so now I'm going to right click on my main hand and I want to add preview asset of the pistol now I want to go ahead and make it right. 
Another thing I want to do is hit pause. Take it all the way back to frame zero. And now we can actually worry about getting it just right. Notice the hands are not right either. But this will be good enough. So for your own project, take your time, get it right. You want to look at it from the front make sure that the pistol is right. He's kind of got it cockeyed a little bit. It's a little better. That's good enough. So we'll save that and do that. Now, let's go back to our unarmed animation. I'm going to go to the animation blueprint. Go to default. We want to do this only when we're standing still for right now. We don't want to be running around. So we also want to go to our player character. So it has pistol and we have pistol drawn right there. So let's go ahead and keyboard R. Let's use the R key for now. Whenever I use R to draw my pistol, what I want to do is first off get a branch node and ask do we have the pistol. We don't want to just do this without a pistol. We don't want to Act like we're drawing a gun if we don't have a gun. Like this is actually where I would start doing some replication and not this guy. So has pistol, if it's true, then we want to set pistol drawn. And let's actually add in a flip flop. Because now we want to do this both ways here. Control C and Control V. Go to right here. And now pistol drawn is false and true. So we hit R the first time. We're going to draw the pistol. We hit it again. We're not going to draw the pistol. We're going to undraw it essentially. So we're going to compile and save that. Now pistol drawn. Here's where we need to do this. And the event graph from here let's get pistol drawn okay now this is where we all we did was we came to the end of our our regular animation event graph and just added in getting a cast over the player base and get player character now pistol drawn we want to draw from this and promote to a variable and pistol out Call it whatever you want. And we're just going to drag that to the end there. Now, let's go ahead and compile and save. Let's go to our animation graph. And from our idle and our run, let's do add state. Draw pistol. And let's go ahead and move it over here. And we want to go from this state back down to here. So now we have both ways. We can go to drawing the pistol. We want to just double click on that and pistol out. That's it. Go back to default. And then coming from the pistol drawn to put the gun away is on this side. You can see the arrow is going back to idle run. And we want to get pistol out. And we want to not boolean and that's it that's it and go to our draw pistol 
we're going to get holding pistol, connect that to there, and compile, save. So now, what did I forget? So, we picked up our pistol. Hit R. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Except for we forgot one thing here. Let's get a reference to our pistola. And let's actually drop them right in the middle. We want to set visibility. Connect that in there. Copy it. Connect that. Connect that. Check that. Make it look pretty. Because being this beautiful is not by accident, I promise you. I was born this defective. I mean, I was born this lovely. So then, this is what we're going to do. We're going to make the pistol visible and not visible. So we come over here and pick up the pistol and R. Okay, there's a problem. So let's go back to our pistol base, our player pistol base, our player base, you dumb shit. And let's go ahead and turn off real time. Let's actually go back to our mesh and for now what I want to do is I want to use a custom or use an animation asset you can suck my anus um, holding pistol select the pistol and make it visible and now Let's make it right. That camera, the size of that camera is a bit on the annoying side. We could fix that here in just a moment. Now I just want to make the pistol visible and be in the hands somewhat correct. Let's go our binoc cam. And just shrink it. It shouldn't affect the um, the actual use of the camera itself. So what we have done here is we got our pistol. Let's actually go back to that and good enough. Now what we need to do is make sure that we turn off visible again and we go back to our mesh and let's go back to our animations and we want to use animation blueprint unarmed animation blueprint compile and save. So now if we go back in here Everything's lovely. Picked up our pistol. Hit R, and our pistol's right. So, and that's the thing, is right now, we don't have the walking animations and all the other animations. If you had a blueprint, or animation blueprint set up for walking with your pistol out or whatever else, then that's fine. And you notice that whenever you draw the pistol out, it looks okay, but when you go to put it away, the pistol goes, it just vanishes. What if we were to see if we can put a delay in there? Go to our event graph, and let's drag this out. Put a delay in. Of... 
half second. Very nitpicky, but let's try to point three. You want it whenever his hand goes all the way down, you want the thing to disappear. I, I do at least. Because I'm that OCD. Well hell, the point two was probably good enough. I could have just left it the way it was. Point two. Alright, so that's good. So um what about aiming? You want to aim down sights? Aim offsets are a pain in the ass. So let's draw a pistol, put it away. Draw the pistol, put it away. We want to stop our character from moving when we have the pistol drawn. So let's go back in here and on R. So I want to make this a little bit neater and consistent. And. Let's grab our character movement. And let's deactivate our character movement. And let's activate. So this is going to stop us from moving whenever we have our pistol drawn. And allow us to continue moving when we put it away. Alright, so we're running. Grab our pistol, draw it out. We can't move. We're stuck. We can pan around and see ourselves, But let's go ahead and put the gun away. And now we can run again. So now... The animation works, but do you really want to look at this? You you really want to kind of aim down sight at this point, don't you? So let's actually go back in here. And what we did before was we activated the pistol by turning on visibility. And then we went back to our mesh and... use animation asset and it went right back to our hold pistol so couple different ways we can do this we could use our binox cam but it's looking at a different angle there it's looking right through our eyes so let's actually add in a another camera and yeah let's keep our mesh selected We're going to call this our pistol cam. We want to socket it to our main hand. We want to scale it to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Make it really tiny. Let's rotate it 90. And um, let's move it. I'm going to move it to right here for now, and then I'm going to get the angle to be about right and level with the pistol, and then I'm going to move the camera back and down just a hair not that much um, let's turn off snapping and let's try it at right there we're gonna have to move this so it's not perfect we want it centered up on the pistol
and it is not centered on the pistol because the pistol is not exactly perfect. Let's try it like that and let's get our pistol cam. So this creates an actual gun camera. It puts the camera right there behind the gun and we can actually move it back even farther. We just want to make sure that it was lined up perfectly. Yeah, trying to get everything lined up perfectly can be a pain. But you know that you could also um, just cheat and move this all the way in front of the camera and do like we did with the binoculars and set up a crosshair system. But for now, we're going to test this out. We're actually going to move the camera back and then up just a hair. So we want to be looking at it from behind the pistol. Let's try that. Let's just try it. Um, compile it and save. And let's go back to our pistol. Turn off visible. Scroll back up. Let's go back to our mesh and we want to use animation blueprint compile and save event graph now when we have the pistol drawn we want to get a reference to our buy not cam not our buy not cam idiot get a reference to our pistol cam and get a reference to our follow cam So here's what we're going to do is we are going to go from follow cam and we're going to deactivate control C, control V so we get a copy of that one. So the first thing we want to do is deactivate the follow camera and hook those up when we want to undo the pistol we want to deactivate the pistol cam and now we want to activate the pistol cam and we'll have control C control V and we want to activate that guy he's got a crush cross him back and forth so that you you're drawing the pistol out you're going to turn off the follow cam and turn on the pistol cam. When you put your gun away, you're going to turn off the pistol cam and turn on the follow cam. So you're going to go back into third person view. However, a couple more things we've got to do. Remember, pistol cam. Use pawn control rotation. That is a must. And then we also want to get a reference to our pistol cam. And we can get this one right here. Um, we want to no. um, drag off from there and we want to use we want to learn how to frickin type type in yaw so we want to set use controller rotation yaw not y'all I know I'm from the south but you know what we want to use it here and not use it down here No, not use it down here. Compile and save. So what that's going to do is that's going to let us draw the pistol out and as we move around it's going to move with us when we're moving the mouse. So let's see how bad this screwed up now. Pick up the damn pistol, fool. Thank you. So our, our pistol is absolutely shit up. <laughs> and it's not moving correctly with the, uh, there's no aim space. Um, that's why it's not moving correctly. Our view will, will move, but the pistol will not move up and down because we don't have an aim space to go with it. So this is where doing this would be problematic. The pistol's out of skew. You could spend 
you know, hours trying to get the pistol lined up, get the camera lined up. But there's another way you can do this, and actually, like we did for the, the scope cam, we could just set up a crosshair, we could just use a first person view, and use that same camera, and actually put it in front of the pistol, and until we can get an aim space. You're going to need an aim space. That's just a given. You're going to need to um, set it up to where whenever you look up, it, the the arms follow the movement of your eyes. Right now, the eyes are the only thing that's controlling anything. So go to our viewport, go to our pistol cam, and we can actually change where that's socketed to, to the head. and actually use the binoc cam if we wanted to, but um, let's see, 95 because we were off a, a little bit. If you leave it right there, then you're going to see the pistol in your way short term getting by without that we want to make sure that let's just go ahead and zero this out zero zero and 80 so that's going to put it right there in front of the pistol so that it's just going to well let's put it in front of our eyes too but I had you right. Zero, negative 12 puts it right in front of our eyesight. Until you can get a, um, an aim space set up and you just want to get this working, um, short term, you know, I don't have an aim space and it would take me a little while to get one set up here. Now, hit R. All right, the pistol's still on the way here. So we need to, to move our camera a little bit more. Not optimal. But, again, the aim space, there is an aim space that's in here. Um... Aim space, iron sights. I'm not an animation guy, so short term, I'm getting away from doing it because I don't know how. To, well, I mean, I could figure it out just like I, I didn't know how to do the um, binoculars before. So now we have the ability to, to move around, aim around. If we're in single player, it's not going to matter. We see our shadow. We're holding a pistol. That's cool. Um, hit R to put our gun back away and get back to running again. Draw our pistol out. Ooh. Nope. Nope. And, you know, crosshair-wise, we just need a simple crosshair. Um, you could make your own custom crosshair, downloaded crosshairs, whatever else. Um, let's go to widget folder, user interface, widget blueprint, and crosshair underscore W. And as typical, you can create your own. I've got a bunch that I've downloaded, but if you don't want to download one, just grab two images. The first one, anchor it to the center. Do you want the size to be X of 5, the height of 50, and this one, the opposite. Anchor it to the center. We want 50 and five and then what we'll do here is on this half of 50 is negative 25 and y position will be negative 2.5 that's dead center the other one again negative 2.5 and negative 
25. That puts your crosshair dead center in the middle of your screen. It's a no-nonsense quickie. Um, we want to go ahead and add another variable in. Crosshair on. Good enough for me. Go to our graph. And let's go ahead and cast to player. I'm getting tired again. Cast to no shit. Um, get player character. And what we're going to do is get crosshair on. If crosshair on is equal to false, is what we're trying to find here. False, then remove from parent, and that's it. Crosshair widget is done. Go to our event graph. Um, we're going to set control C and control V. Damn. Set it to on here. And leave it unchecked here to turn it off. So this is our draw pistol. Changes our view to the, the right camera. Our controller rotation yaw. Our crosshair becomes on. And at this point we need to create a widget. And get player controller. Select the crosshair widget. Add to viewport. That are that. Now let's see if this works. Grab our pistol. R. There's our crosshair. Put our pistol away. Crosshair goes away and we're back to third person view. So quickly, oh, that all works. Lovely. It's delightful. Pistol drawn. That's one we're going to remember here. We're going to do um, left mouse button. We are going to get a branch. We're going to check to see if the pistol is drawn. And if pistol is drawn, we want to, there we go, line trace by channel. All right, line trace by channel. We're going to get our pistol cam. We want to get forward vector and we want to get world location. Man, let's see. Location on top, vector on bottom. First off, start location is going to be there. get forward vector so we want vector times float and let's go 2000 and then let's get um, vector plus vector 
disconnect that, and that goes to the end. So what we're doing is we are setting the, the range of our pistol, and we are setting the location where we're going to start our shot and end our shot. This is the range of our gun. For right now, it's going to be a pew-pew laser gun. So let's go ahead and we're going to set draw debug type for duration. Five seconds is long enough. Compile and save. Then we'll come over here. We got our pistol. Let's draw our pistol out. Pew, 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 pew. Everywhere where our crosshair goes is where we're going to shoot. But now we can't use it because we don't have the pistol drawn. And since I'm so awesome and, and love doing this, we're going to go to Add New. Features, content pack, content pack, starter content, and why not? Let's load this project up with all kinds of lovely stuff. Why not? Because, um, we don't have any sound to work with. We gotta have sound. Sound is awesome. We don't need starter pack. We need audio. We have explosion cue. That's going to be our gunshot sound. And our particles, we're going to make an explosion happen at the location of where we're going pew pew. Right? And so we have our gunshot sound, explosion sound. If we had other sounds like, oh, I don't know, uh, it'd be nice to have a gunshot sound. Oh, wait. Audio. New folder. Effects. Huh. I might actually have something here. Find the right hard drive. Um, I think I actually moved these files to the correct location. Now I just have to find that location. Um, no, I didn't put it in the right location. Huh. Go figure. Why would I put it in the correct location? I mean, pfft. That would be stupid. Good enough. So let's save all. And 9mm create Q. And we want the output override attenuation. And let's make it that that's good you can go away now thank you and the other thing we had was in the audio explosion cue all right already got our attenuation set for that and we're good so let's go to our player base and at that point, let's go ahead and add in right here, play sound at location, grab world location of our scope cam, that's good enough, and we want 9mm Q. Compile and save. We're going to just keep testing one little bit at a time. Yay, we got pew pew sounds. So, let's go back over here and on hit. 
break that son of a gun. Okay. We want to spawn emitter at location. The location is going to be, let's write it impact point. And we want explosion. And let's go ahead and play sound at location. We want explosion cue right there. The location, we'll just drag it off of the location there. Give me that damn gun. We hear a gunshot, but since that wall is too far away, projectile. Who does projectiles? Nobody does projectiles anymore. Let's extend our range out. Um, let's go 10,000 for our range. Pretend it's a sniper rifle. Projectiles. <laughs> Yeah, I'll leave it to you. Um, that would be if you're you're trying to use a bow, and we don't have that in this asset pack. Or else I would add something like that in there. Um, but you know Cindy Studios does have for free a um, bow and arrow. You can add to any asset pack. It's free. So does that mean since it's free, I should add that into this asset pack? Because you can get it, and it won't cost you anything else? So let's actually turn off our line trace, our pew pew line. Turn that off so we don't have the, the laser beam anymore. At that point you'd want a um, a projectile. You can see our collision whenever it hits the wall. None of this is replicated, by the way. And our movement is stopped. Put that away, we go back to normal running. Yes, I shortened the amount you can jump, so you can't jump on everything. Hey, I thought all this was cool enough, you know? So now we got our binoculars back. Binoculars, hit B. Zoom in. Zoom out. Mouse wheel zooming. Hey, I thought this was a particularly good video doing the binoculars. I think it's cool. I've never done it before, and I just figured it all out and did it all by my lonesome. And like I said, I set it up to where, you know, whenever you put your binoculars away. Here is a thing we need to look at. I'm using my binoculars. I'm zoomed in. What happens if I draw my pistol out? That was the last video I just did. Now I have my pistol out, and I'm in my binocular view. So that's broke as hell. So we need to prevent that. So we can't shoot, we can't draw the pistol is what we want to do. Has pistol. So we need to Muzzle flash is easy. All you have to do is just, um, um, whenever you're doing the same thing right here, um, on your left mouse button, all you would do is just get a reference to your pistol, and then from there, 
um, get socket location you'd have to have a socket on there the um, like muzzle I don't have a socket on my pistol so to add that socket to the pistol go to weapon skeleton add socket and rename it to muzzle and because for some reason it's always rotated 90 degrees grab that we're not going to see our muzzle flash is the problem so now that you have your muzzle and there are good muzzle flashes in Cindy Studios assets, but not in here, not in this one. So that's your muzzle. So now you're getting the, the socket name of muzzle, and then get socket location, and then you would just do from here spawn emitter at location, and you'd have to neaten up all this stuff maybe get everything nasty looking and there's location emitter explosion trouble is you're not going to see it because of the way our camera set up see it's just going to get in our face we're not going to be able to see it too good you could scale it and that kind of stuff too but that's all you need to do for adding a muzzle flash Yeah, I did. Um, um, essentially, I, the problem that I ran into with the vehicle um, is the multiplayer replication is screwed up. Um, works perfectly fine for single player. I can walk over, get in front of the door, and why are you being an asshole? Why are you being an asshole? Seriously, why are you being an asshole? But you can actually get in. Essentially, all it's doing is whenever you get in, it's, it's you've only got the one character. So, it's just going to make... You're adding a fake driver that looks like your character. So when you get in, that's not actually my normal character. That's just a fake one that the visibility was set to, in, to not visible. So whenever you get into it, it turns it visible. And when you get out, it turns it invisible. All right, it's got my binoculars. Got my pistola. So what we need to do, though, was actually fix the, um, the binocular zoom. And... And all this was for the binoculars. So what we need to do is we're going to press B to equip our binox. Yeah, you, you would, what I would probably end up doing is setting up a variable in the um, the the player character to actually have a, um, a reference to what your mesh is and what accessories you have on, that kind of stuff. So that you make a clone of that and save that information. Alright, so RB for Binoc, I'm just going to grab all that stuff and just drag it a little bit farther back. And I'm going to grab another branch node, connect it in here. So, do we have the Binox? Yes, cool. Um, is pistol drawn? No, then do all our stuff for the for that. So now that's going to prevent us from having the the pistol and the binox at the same time. But the only problem I run into is a problem with the replication on the um, the Jeep itself is the client can't get in. So I'll show you that in just a second here. 
So now on R, when we draw our pistol, we want to do the same thing we just did, but let's put it in over here. We'll add in a branch node. And we need to check first off um, Binox. We need to see if we're using our Binox. If we are, then we don't want to do anything. If we're not, then we can check do we have the pistol. If so, then we can do that. So now you can't use the pistol and the Binox at the same time. That's just going to prevent that from happening. So you can't pick up the pistol if you already have one. You can't pick up the Binox if you already have them. And now you can't use your Binox at the same time as the pistol. You can't use the pistol at the same time as the Binox. So there's no cheating, and it, and it shouldn't break the system. So essentially, if I went over here and did play, change this to 2, change this to new editor window, and let's do this. I'm going to shrink these windows down so I can get them both on the screen. Okay, so this is the server. Hi, how are you doing? So, server can come over here and get into a Jeep. And as you can see, now I'll go over here to the client. Now you can see I'm the client now. I can see that there's somebody in that Jeep. You bastard, I don't want to drive a Jeep. Come over here, and I cannot get in at all. Will not let me get in. But I can see he's in there. That works. So I can go over here and I can get out and everything is all fine. But now when we start doing replication stuff, I'm now on the, the client. If I come over here and take the pistol, it's not letting me take the pistol. Will it let me take the um, Binox? No, I can't. But come over here is the server no problem I can see the problem is that's why we need to replicate things and let me come over here and grab those okay this is the server on the left so now if he draws out the pistol. The client doesn't see the animation. So if I'm sitting here looking at this. The server sees the client as having the pistol drawn. <coughs> but the um, the client isn't doing the animation and doesn't see the server doing the animation. So the server So you see none of this is replicated. If you look, whenever I do the thing here, the client sees it, but the server is causing the client to do this. So that's where replication comes in handy. And I'll do that in another video. This is past the hour mark already. Like I said, what the hell? Client is seeing the um, server doing all kind of weird shit. <laughs> okay, that did affect the server. Like Hulk smash here. Yeah, 
still some replication stuff that I'm gonna have to work on and get all this stuff right. Now you notice the um, the server has already picked up the binoculars, and they've disappeared off the map. And it's already picked up the pistol, and that's already disappeared off the map. So once the replication is done, then <laughs> you can see the um. I'm seeing that the client is actually doing the binoc uh, thing. You know what would actually be kind of cool is adding a click sound. Every time you bump the mouse wheel, one more click. Add a little click sound to it. I don't have a regular click sound. The one I've got is kind of loud, but I could create one. So whenever you, you pick up the binoculars, you hit B. Now if I hit the mouse wheel forward or backwards, I want it to make a click noise every time it does something. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to get out of here. Um, this is over the hour mark. So let's actually go over to my audio folder, effects. Um, I need to spend about a day going through this friggin' hard drive and just cleaning up everything. You know, um, the data folder audio click should have been right there. Bastard. Um, yeah, I just and spend the whole day sorting through my F drive and cleaning it up completely. Oh, there's my porn folder. You don't want to see that. Um, hey, what a man, a woman, a donkey, and a midget do in the privacy of their own home is entirely up to them. Unless it's on Pornhub. And then it gets a million views. You know what? This is in alphabetical order. Damn. Alright, so we'll set up this. Create a queue. Go into the sound queue. And make sure it's not looping. And override the attenuation. And we want to make sure that we set our volume multiplier to 0.5. Save. Exit. Save all. And now I'm going to go to my player character. And... Sorry, I keep going off frame there. I know you want to see this lovely, sexy face here. And on our binox, here at this section here, when we're doing our mouse wheel clicks, what I want to do is get a reference to the mesh. And I want to play sound at location. This is going to make my blueprint ugly. I don't like ugly blueprints. Damn it to hell. Yeah, I could spend a day just cleaning up this thing. Go to here, and go to here. And let's actually put it right there. Now 
because we need to get the reference to get world location pop that in there pop that in there and click to queue alright so that should do it we just need our binox now we go into our binox hit B so there we go as we move our mouse wheel we hear a click. Technically speaking, you know, I would actually take this. So we know it's working. And if you wanted to be really cool, you could put it in after the, you know, whatever. Set up a condition to where it only clicks if you can add or, or subtract to it. But you know what? That's good enough. It's good enough. Y'all have gotten two hours and almost three hours out of my ass tonight. I'm old and I'm fragile. And my new toy will be here tomorrow. So I can't use the binoculars because the pistol's out. Put the pistol away, pull out the binoculars. I can't use the pistol now. I get a click sound whenever I move my mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out. That's awesomeness. Doesn't seem like much, but I think it's pretty cool. All right. Here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to save all, save current, make sure everything's good. And sneak peek for later this week. I was going to do this evening, but I just, you know, I got excited to want to do this stuff. Um, another product series. And I'm, I'm on the fence. I'm, I'm just, I'm still deciding whether or not I want to do it or not. So with the Polygon stuff from City Studios. I love the Polygon stuff. But the Simple Series stuff, they don't really get much love. Don't restore and don't ever show me that shit again. So what I've done is actually gone in here and I've put in Simple Apocalypse, Simple Military, Simple People. Um, and just kind of give an example. Uh, was kind of fixing some collision issues and that kind of stuff. Um, this is from the simple military um, pack the demonstration map and got a player start right over here so we'll just hit play the simple characters well they're a lot simpler than the uh, the polygon stuff so it's not everybody's cup of tea but you know first person view got a drone flying up there Got some tanks. Got some more tanks, tents, vehicles. Um, another tank, there's an M1 tank there. One thing that I did notice was the size of the characters. That is the default sized UE4 mannequin compared to the size of these characters and this world. So you can see how much taller the simple characters are over the UE4 mannequin versus the Polygon series is actually shorter than the regular UE4 mannequin. So if you're gonna mess with the simple stuff, you have to keep that in mind that everything is bigger. That's a pretty considerable amount bigger. So if you guys are interested in this, let me know in Discord and I'll do more with this. I mean, you got an Apache helicopter, you got tanks, you got Scout cars, trucks, M1 Abrams, got Russian tank, there's another armored um, vehicle right there, some shooting targets. Cool. 
So if you guys want to see more of the, the simple stuff, let me know. Um, but this was just the first one that I put in and started playing around with um, just animating the character. This is actually using the standard UE4 mannequin skeleton um, and the um, the third person animation blueprint was just quickly retargeted just like I do with the other ones. Just a quick retarget. His back is a little bit bent so it would probably go back in and change that but then it would just kind of look like he had a stick up his ass. So you guys let me know if you want to see more of these simple stuff and I'll do it. If not then I won't do it. So just thought I would throw that out there. Because with the simple military you've got a buttload of characters. Special forces, you got terrorists, um, you got pilots, you got all kind of stuff in here. And then of course you got your, your buildings, you got a handful of buildings, you got um, props, artillery shells, um, missiles, tires, targets, you know, the usual stuff, all the different vehicles. Is that other helicopter in here? Yeah, right there. So that's like the old um, Huey helicopter there, and that's kind of like an Apache. You got cargo trucks with the top up and down, fuel tanker, mobile ambulance. Yeah, you got all kind of stuff. These, um, the drone field artillery. So you could actually make something out of this. This is it's pretty cool. The weapons. You've got uh, AK-47. I it's called the M5, but I guess it's supposed to be an M4. Um, minigun. There's a pistol, sniper rifle, RPG, short-barreled shotgun, smoke grenade, sniper rifle, and submachine gun. Then you got static versions of each one of them. You can put like on shelves and stuff. Um, simple apocalypse. Uh, I haven't opened this map yet. I haven't been in this map, so it may take a second to load some um, of the shaders. Bar with it. Yeah, my new belt sander will be here tomorrow. So in the next few days, I'm going to be spending more time actually finishing up those two knives, getting them ready to go. I have not actually seen this map yet, so we'll take a look at this one together. I'm not going to get in here and walk at ground level just because I'd, I'd need to go in here and check. And I, I, mean, I could go to third person game mode and I could just like play from here, but I haven't checked any of the collisions yet, so I don't know if anything is going to be broke. Go into first person view so we can walk around. So you got all kind of different vehicles. Um, it's like a, I guess it's supposed to be a mobile home. Let's actually just fly around. Okay, that's like a body bag with a corpse in it. Um, broke down vehicles. Winnebago with a really huge ass pink flamingo. And a crapper in the yard. Yes, I did check the toilet, make sure there's nothing in there. Um, if you've got the town pack, yeah, uh, check the commode um, upstairs in the house. The big house that you can go into. Yeah, I might find a little something, something. I didn't put it there. I'm just saying. So before we head that way, let's head this way. So we got buildings, got chairs up on top with beer cans up there, like they've been watching the uh, the apocalypse unfold. Uh, let's see some toxic dump situation going on over here. Some playground equipment, another RV type. Got right to cargo ship. Got containers on it. A lighthouse down there. Bunch of buildings with boards on it. Now there's also another asset pack you can get, which is called Apocalypse Interiors. So if you want to go into SOS on the building over there, 
So if you want to be able to have these buildings where you can enter them, if you remember um, the work that I was doing on the town pack, set it up to where you walk over to a door and it teleports you to um, a location where you can actually um, be the interior of it. So you can teleport in and out of the buildings. So you don't have to mess with adding them to here. You could actually just create the interiors of the rooms underneath the uh, the ground, set up your lighting, your walls, and everything else, and go that route. All right, so let's check over here. Um, just some terrain and stuff. This would actually make a relatively fun um, shooter map, just the way it is. Crash tank, body bags. What was that? That's like grass, I imagine. So, police station. There's barricades. See a nuclear power plant over here. What was that? Some boards on randomly on the side of a building. Looks like a market over there. Interstate. This is like the division, the low poly version. The division meets unturned. <laughs> Campsites, the first aid kit. Go check out the power plant. Some wrecked ass buildings. Who builds an apartment complex right next to a damn power plant? I swear. Damn money hungry people, they'll put an apartment in anywhere. Alright, so anything on the other side? Nope, good way to divide the map. All right, that's cool. Um, last little spot over here. Let's actually speed up the camera. A crashed airplane, broken interstate section. Oh, I thought that was a construction site at first, but hell, this looks like an arena. Got corpses impaled on sticks cages. Got a gateway coming in here. Yeah, this would be a cool little setup for an arena. Alright, that's cool. Yeah, this is, um, this is the uh, Simple Apocalypse. This one is still listed on their website at 120 bucks. But as you can see, there's a lot of shit in there. You got a bunch of particle effects, um, characters, oh my god, um, look at the number of characters that it comes with. Even Zombie Santa, I mean if you don't get it for anything else, you got Zombie Santa and you got Zombie Grandma, I mean seriously, come on man, you could be a zombie legless floating grandma. Now who wouldn't want to be that? The Canadian Mountie. Uh, God, materials, meshes, I mean, hell, bodies. You got a bunch of charred bodies and that kind of stuff. Buildings, crap ton of buildings. He said if you want to set up the interior to any of these buildings that you can't get into, then you get the Apocalypse Interior, which is, I think, like 12, 15 bucks, and you can build the interiors and include sewer sections. Hill section with ramp. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Crap, there's a lot of props in here too. And items, props. I mean, you got all these different broken down vehicles. Uh, God, weapons. There's a water gun, grenade launcher, striker shotgun, stinger launcher, spaz shotgun. Hammer, shovel, pipe bomb, Jesus. Pistols of all kind of different types, revolving grenade launcher, a couple sniper rifles. Man, you could actually do a lot with this. Um, vehicles. You've got all kind of different cars, police cars, doom buggies, vehicle hot rod. You've got monster trucks, monster ute, um, muscle car. Oh, check this guy out. That's what we're talking about. Armored school bus already has blood on the front of it. 
So if you want this, this is 120 bucks. But like I said, it is chock full of stuff. Skeletons for all your different weapons. So you can actually set up the um, skeletal meshes. There's a claymore mine, C4. I mean, Desert Eagle flare gun, javelin launcher, a paddle, nail gun, rebar with concrete on it. If you don't have enough assets with this, then I can't help you. All right, well, I'm done. It's an hour and a half, and like I said, if you guys want to see more of the simple series, let me know, and I will do something with it. Otherwise, I won't. Simple enough, right? All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'm going to take a break and get away from this computer for a little bit. See you.